Everyone knows about standard farming techniques. Dig up resources, move them to base, and that's about it. Maybe if you're wicker, you have a lure plant to harvest for you while you're reading your books. That's all fine and dandy, but this game allows you to farm resources in a much more interesting manner. So instead, let's look at some unique ways to put a spin on standard farming. First, let's look at docks. Docks are kind of like the antithesis of farming. You can't plant anything on them. However, you can still get bees onto docks. You would think this is kind of useless because then there's no flowers, since you can't just plant butterflies on the docks. However, you can circumvent this by looking for bees that have already pollinated up to six flowers. Capturing a bee that has pollinated six flowers will allow you to plant a flower anywhere you want. This even includes docks. When you drop the bee, the bee will drop the flower where you dropped it. Do this five more times and then you can have bees automatically spread flowers. Keep in mind that stacking bees will make them forget how many flowers they pollinated. So you need to dedicate an inventory slot to a bee, maybe in a backpack or something, to make sure that no bees get stacked. Bees are also interesting in that they can make grass for us as well. How they do this is a little convoluted. If you try to plant flowers in the caves without any light sources, they will wither up and turn into grass. You can create Create an area with a bunch of flowers and homeless bees, and then let the bees spread the flowers into the darkness. Over time, these new flowers will die and the player will profit the grass. It's good to check on these bees occasionally because if the bees fall asleep in the darkness, they won't wake up on their own. A player with the light source is enough to wake these bees up to get them back to work. Continuing with caves, Death Worms. Death worms are great farmers. If you're basing in the caves, you should certainly separate your farm away from the base, but still within loading distance. If you have a worm attack in the caves, instead of getting ready to kill the worms, go to your farm area and have the worms spawn there. When left alone, worms will automatically harvest up to 10 items, if the items are not edible. If the item is edible, the worms will stop and eat the item. So this is great for grass and twigs. Worms can harvest up to 15 stacks of items, so they can be a great passive farm for the player. Back onto the surface, we have cocoons. Cocoons are amazing farmers to have around your base. Trap them in some walls and you can make any farm imaginable. Place flowers near them if you want to farm butterflies and butter. Place seeds near them and you get yourself a morsel and feather farm. Place them near frog ponds in a three wall square and they will auto farm any frogs that get near. Another farm we can do is using anemones. Anemones are very interesting because they are an automatic trap. You may have heard a lot of people talk about this item, but anemones are interesting. If you were to place them in an area where a creature spawns, the trap will continue to trigger and eventually kill that creature. Some people use this for Ancient Guardian, and others also use it for farming boat goats. You see, boat goats spawn in about every one to two days. That's just enough time for a trap to kill the boat goat in the time it takes for it to reset. So that means if you trap a vote goat with the trap, you'll have an endless farm of vote goat materials. And finally something that's pointless. Under a giant ocean tree, if the player is struck by lightning, the tree will drop a few twigs and grass. You could potentially use this with wicker bottom to endlessly generate grass and twigs. Why would the player do this instead of, you know, using her grow book with the lure plant? No reason, it's just something the player can do. Thanks everyone for watching, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you like my content, you can join my memberships and get access to scripts and early videos for all my channels. If you do so, I'll be so grateful. Until next time, this has been Tara, and take care.